Hello, this is Eric of Spark E-Tech, and welcome to my review of the Acasys, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, M.2 SSD enclosure. Now this is to make your M.2 drive so you can actually have it externally to your PC. The first drive I'm gonna test with is this Western Digital SN770 black drive. But I also want to find out if my Samsung 990 Pro with heatsink will work as well. Full disclosure, Acasys did send me this to review. No money was exchanged. Now let's continue on. A user manual. Two thermal pads included. We can use the spacers to make it so smaller drives can actually fit into place. Also included are two screws, two rubber stoppers, and a screwdriver. If I choose to, I can now take that apart using our included screwdriver. Thank you. Once our screw is removed, we can remove the plate, which simply falls out without the screw. And we're presented with this that you see here, a cooling fan where M.2 goes in and this screw right here. Now this can be removed with our little screwdriver. You got yourself a new M.2 drive to fit in your external enclosure. Do you simply swap it right in here, not worry about anything else, and it's just gonna work? No, it won't just work. You're gonna have to use disk management in order to set it up, or the easiest way to do it is use the software for your M.2 drive. Seagate, you're gonna use Seagate Tools. Samsung, you're gonna use Samsung Magician. Magician, Magician Software, Samsung Magician Software. I don't know I have trouble saying that word. Here I just looked up Western Digital M.2 software. I go right here, Western Digital Dashboard, and I can download that for Windows. I'm gonna double click that to open up the software, and we can now go through the steps of setting this up. Disk management right here is the drive. We can create a new simple volume, so let's do that. Sure, we'll just follow the steps and we'll call it D. Sure, why not? D drive. And I can change the name. I'm going to call this backup. Here's my backup. We're going to do a quick format. We'll leave this as default as well. And let's finish. And here is our drive now showing up. In terms of specifications and sizing, it can fit a 22. 42 size drive. It can fit a 2260 and a 2280 for those wondering about what drive sizes it can fit. NVMe, not a serial ATA SSD. Different specification than NVMe, which is much faster. Now, the key type itself is a B and M key type, and that is the slot. You can see right here, let's get a closer look. That is our slot, our key type on here. USB-C to USB-C cable. You need the proper specification if you want to change the cable. It has to be 10 gigabit per second minimum speed transfer rate to get the full speed of this external enclosure. To start things out, let's go to Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. And here we have a test for write and read speed. My correct drive should be selected. And here it is with my YouTube videos all backed up. And I'm gonna select that folder and press speed test. And this will test the write speed as we can see here and the read speed expected performance, which is really good. Almost one gigabyte per second. Not too shabby, just shy on my read and writes. I've now removed my slower Western Digital Drive and I have my Samsung 990 Pro 4 terabyte drive installed in this enclosure. One thing we'll see is that this is a little bit too big to put the little cap on. Now we're gonna do the same speed test on the same exact USB port using the Samsung 990 and press start for a speed test. And we are pretty much getting that full just about totally one gigabyte per second. Not too shabby, it's pretty darn consistent as we can see. Now, if we connected this directly to an M.2 drive, 
directly on the PC be faster, but for an enclosure that's external, this is really fast. Here I have a large file folder, 5.63 gigabytes of files. We can see them right here. Go to uh, more options and paste. So here we can see copying from the drive to my desktop took barely any time at all. Really impressive. It's 5.63 gigabytes and let's copy that over. Going to go to send to, by the way, I'm using Windows 11 and I'm going to send to my storage drive. Let's see how long this takes. And that's not taking any time really at all. Really fast. 256 gigabyte USB 3.1 drive. And let's check it out. And our speed is going down. This time we're copying a 13.3 gigabyte file. Yes, you heard me, gigabyte. And that's with the Western Digital drive connected to the Akasis and let's see how fast this copies over to the desktop and we're going to paste it to the desktop and we can see it's going super fast almost almost just shy of one gigabyte per second that's about 980 megabytes per second very fast and now we're going to copy that back so I just press copy and now we're going to go to paste you can see it's called Backup, that's what I named it, the Western Digital Drive, and let's see how slow or fast that goes. 790-ish megabytes per second, not too bad. Yes, that's megabytes. So the transfer speed is going pretty good for 13.3 gigabytes of a file size. Now let's have a competition of my Lexar 256 gig drive, USB 3.1, to see when you have a large file size, like 13 gigs, how it goes for transferring the file from a flash drive versus this external drive. So we're gonna go to send to the Lexar drive and what? It just won't copy, it's too large. But we can see that the Lexar says 210 gigabytes free. Some of these thumb drives are more consistent than others. Some will stay at 30 megabytes per second, for instance and some will stay faster for a bit longer and then drop off but they tend not to be the same quality as an M.2 also I have not found one yet without a 4 gigabyte single file limitation personal experience so far now with the M.2 external drive the only limitation tends to be at least what I've seen is simply the transfer rate Akasis does make one that is USB 4.0. Currently rare, but it's becoming more common. And with the new AMD motherboards for AM5, the X, I believe, 870, those have USB 4.0 built in. A theoretical max speed of 40 gigabits divided by 8 puts you at about 5 gigabytes max theoretical speed. Now, if you go directly to your PC, sure, it can go faster if you get the fastest M.2 per se, but the point is if you don't have the storage in your PC, you can still externally store your files like I do my videos itself and I store externally so I can take the drive with me rather than towing an entire PC with me. And it's a better option than most of these where you don't know what you're getting. Just because it's called a higher spec doesn't mean these things are better. For M.2 storage enclosure, I already own one right here. But what's the issue with this one? We can see as I open and close, it actually rubs on this. But you need force down on this a bit in order to be useful. And every time I open and close it, it's just simply sliding across the top. That's where this design can at least make more sense. Here's the included one millimeter thermal pad. Place that here. Now, if it was touching, it would actually stick. More on that in a bit, but let's see what happens when I flip it over. It falls out. Okay. Now I'm going to take the one millimeter pad. I mean the 0.5 millimeter pad. Sorry, my bad. And apply that to the one millimeter pad. And by the way, this is effective. I can actually feel the heat transfer through these pads. So these are effective pads. These are definitely not low quality per se, from what I notice. And if this is thick enough, it won't fall out. So now this is about one to about 2.5 millimeters. 
And if this is thick enough, this will not fall out. So I'm gonna push it on. There we go. Now for those confused, what a thermal pad really does, it allows heat transfer between the actual M.2, for instance, and this metal plate and spreads the heat across. And since there's some contact with the sides, it should at least dissipate the heat across the side as well. It's not gonna really remove the heat, but it's gonna spread the heat 40 degrees Celsius for most effectiveness. For those curious of the fan noise, let's check it out. You can see the microphone's right here, facing right towards where I'll be plugging this in. So I'll plug it into my USB right now. Out of pure curiosity, I want to see what happens when I take this out of the encasement. These screws are very, very tight, so it's easy to strip them if you're not careful. Now that I removed all four screws from inside, we can now remove this. Upon close inspection of this fan, we can't see any wires connecting it. Not on the front side, not in the back side, but we can see a trace right here. Now, if I wanted to remove this fan, I can simply pull it up and it will come out. We can see the shaft right here and here we can see the magnetic poles. This is two pair poles because each set is a pair or four individual poles, which turns the motor. Now with this removed, let's see what happens. If there's any sound at all, I doubt it. And if you want silence, well, that'll work. But I'd recommend, of course, having your thermal pads in order to get heat transfer, especially on a high-end unit. Otherwise, this fan will effectively help quite a bit at removing some heat from this unit. Two of the screws are really short. That's because they broke off inside. Since my screws broke, we can hear now there's a bit of sound when I touch this, but that's where the thermal pad, having no room to move, will make it silent anyways, with this not having any rattling sound. And here we are. No rattle noise, no movement inside, and without the fan being right here. Let's see if this works or if there's any noise at all, which I think there won't be. Curiosity is killing me. And what do we have? Silence, pure silence, no fan noise, if that's a concern to you. So should you simply not want to have a fan, can be removed, but you might break two screws as you saw that happen to me. But it's still with extra thermal pads, if you have any laying around, you can fill that gap. Or if your M.2 drive happens to be a little thicker than this one, this one is a very low profile M.2. Would I recommend keeping the fan installed? Yes, I would. It definitely does help temperatures because when I had thermal pads attached to here and the heat was transferring, this got quite hot and the fan did a great job of keeping the temperatures down. So let's say I had a smaller, shorter drive. How would I install it in here? I would, of course, place it in first. I would take one of my stoppers, rubber stopper right here, and I'd get it placed there. Next, I need the spacer from here to here. Right here, there's other spacers included, and fit it between this rubber and here. Next, I would simply take my screw and put it right in here, and there we go. That would allow me to fit a smaller drive. If you have any questions, leave them down below in comments because I can't answer your questions if you don't ask them. Maybe there's something I didn't say or maybe I made a mistake in saying something. This is Erica Sparky Tech. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.